hey, look at that. It's time for History Road. Oh, is that what time it is? Um, Guys, I'm real excited about history. This history road. Why is that? Um, but you know, I I didn't I didn't do something last time, and I and I don't I didn't like it, but I felt like the reason why, um, we didn't do it is because we had Owen here. Mm-hmm. But I'm I like it so much that I'm gonna do it anyway, and I'm just I just forgot it last time. But since we have Owen on the keys, I'm still gonna play the history road theme song. Oh, I thought you were talking about the stream. No, the history road streaming. No, we weren't going to mention that again. Here comes the history road theme song. History. History. That's a goddamn jamming bass line, baby. <laughs> that bass line is being taken for a wall. Fuck, dude. That's like, that's a hot bass line. Mm-hmm. It's like fucking hot. Like I'm getting horny over that bass line. <laughs> that's a bass line that you could order up on Blue Apron. Dude, I'm telling you what. I've never been, I've never wanted to fuck a bass line. I would fucking take it. Wait that a bass line can get it. So you're giving it to the baseline or taking it from I'll do, the baseline? I'll do it any way it wants. I'm letting the baseline take the lead on this one. Honestly, I would let that baseline go in the back door. What's up? I'd let that I'd let it go anywhere it wants. I'd let that baseline come on my back. History. <laughs> Yeah. Listen to that fucking bass line, man. It's a good bass line. That's the fucking... Dude, I swear to God, that's the Val Kilmer of bass lines. <laughs> and I'm talking Val Kilmer, Top Gun. And you know which scene I'm talking about. They're wet. <laughs> Those are wet boys playing with a ball. <laughs> oh, God. They're on the beach. This history road comes to us from Dick Grayson. Um, and the emails, the subject line is the small gentleman history road. He says there once was a boy, um, this Dick Grayson is Robin. Yeah. This boy grew up to become a gentleman. However, this boy was still a boy size when he grew up. Fortunately, this gentleman was the gentlest man there ever was. The boy's only problem was his small stature. This gentleman faced many obstacles throughout his life. This is just one of the boy's misadventures and it's titled the tummy ache. Small guy has tummy ache. (coughs) The small gentleman once went on an expedition to find the greatest Giro there ever was. Is it Giro, Mike? Giro. Giro. The boy traveled to every mountaintop in Greece until he found it at the very top of Dynamic Mountain. There was the golden hero 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 the boy ate the golden yeah in a single L Mike, I'm going to highlight this word here. Yeah. And I want you to do it too. Okay. The boy ate the golden yelp in a single... Ow. Ow. However, the gentleman had made a grave mistake for the golden yelp was made of solid gold. The gentleman realized this error when the tummy ache hit him so hard, it beat the food out of him. And knew, he'll throw goblin, and knew he needed to find a remedy quick. So he went to his alchemist relative, Aunt Acid. Get it? Aunt Acid? Like when you have a stomach problem, you take an aunt acid. <laughs> aunt acid told him that the only solution to this particular problem was to find John Dongle. 
John Dongle will be the only way you'll be able to cure this troublesome tummy ick. <laughs> said Aunt Acid. To find the wizard! You must travel down History Road, past the E.T. and address, through the Clover Field, and finally, you'll have to fight through the Sea of 7,000 Sounds! <laughs> and so, with a quick nap on a Lisa mattress, our boy protagonist left. As he walked down History Road, he met a dirty man wearing a white shirt, jeans, and possibly a hat named Owen. Owen's breath smelled of deathly Pizza Hut and cigarette smoke. But our boy protagonist didn't mind. He had smelled worse. I will join you and guide the way by struggling through various songs that contain somewhat distinguishable piano parts. <laughs> Blue jean, baby. Oh, how it feels so real. Owen explained from just far enough that you couldn't hear every fourth word he said. As they neared the end of History Road, they came across a lone kitchen counter with some sort of creature atop it. As they neared the intriguing eye-level alien, it pointed an illuminated finger in a direction. Owen, what is that alien's... There it is. <laughs> Which they expected to be the correct path to take, but it was a tsunami of candy corn. As the characters drowned in confectioner's glaze, Owen and our boy protagonist woke up in the clover field. The field was filled with slushos and barrels of farts. <laughs> As the meadow turned dark, they realized something had covered the sun. As they gazed towards the sky, they knew exactly what had eclipsed our star. It was none other than John Goodman's face. <laughs> he yelled loudly, Mustang Sally! <laughs> Pieces of pork rind, stale cake, and swamp pop fell out of his mouth. The small gentleman knew he needed to put a stop to this ASAP as a crumb flew by. It cut our boy protagonist against the cheek. As blood trickled out, he realized that he needed he realized what he needed to do. SG smeared it all over his hands and waved furiously at King Ralph. Red! Mr. Goodman exclaimed and began to chuckle. And with a trail of laughter, Roseanne's husband left. <laughs> SG and OC headed towards the Sea of 7,000 Sounds, but as they had no idea what was in store for them there, as they neared the end of the shore, our boy protagonist began to wonder, how am I going to get across this big, starring Tom Hanks, body of water? How am I going to get across this big, starring Tom Hanks, body of water? He asked Owen. <laughs> Owen glanced over and saw a big, starring Tom Hanks, hat <laughs> next to a red keytar. Legends say this thrift shop, shop instrument was discovered by a very loud, almost president, who wielded it to travel through time and space, and he was joined by Lee Newton with a hat and a beard. What if every time Owen plays the piano, it leaks in that guy? <laughs> Take this to cross the ocean. I hope you. I hope to see you again someday, Mr. Gentleman. The small gentleman gave Owen a nod, played a key, and began to surf across the waves of wavelengths as he began to traverse the sea of 7,000 sounds. All of a sudden, our boy protagonist felt compelled to say, that's clickable. 
For some odd reason, the urge to say, that's clickable, overtook him. So he said, that's clickable. As SG was saying this, many other noises began to awaken. As a babbling brook slowly began rising in volume, it was accompanied by uncomfortable burps, yells, and other broken human sounds. <laughs> Next, a singing bowl, or Tibetan singing bowl, was hit deafeningly hard. And the sound carried on seemingly forever. Just as the small gentleman started flying by the surface of the water, he noticed that in the distance, there was a hurricane of laughter. SG was confused. First of all, how does an amazing amount of laughs manifest into a hurricane? Secondly, how does it exist in this world? Then, our boy protagonist remembered that he lived in a terrifying world and awoke from his daydream to find that he was in the eye of the hurricane. When it seemed that all was over, SG realized that John Dongle was right next to him. The small gentleman quickly explained to John Dongle what had happened. And Dongle closed his eyes for a moment. He beckoned for SG to come, come closer and whispered in his ear. Ever heard of Pepto-Bismol? And that's the end.